This is the second video in the PowerPoint 2013 series. In the first video, we looked at how to create our PowerPoint, adding slides and all the different elements. And in this video, we'll try to talk about how to add design elements, how to do slide transitions, and how to do what's called custom animation. I had created that file, and it was called Amir's Resume. So I can open it from here, or I can go to Open Other Presentation if it wasn't listed here. And I can also click on this button that will pin it that means it will always be visible on the top so I can pin as many as I want so that they are always here I can click it and here's the PowerPoint I had done earlier where I have like seven to eight different slides now the first thing I want to talk about is how do you add a design so I can go to the design tab and in the design tab I'm just gonna click on any one of these themes so I just click on it and you can see on the left hand side they start to change just to show it in a better way I'll just go to view slight sorter and I will reduce the zoom a little on the right hand side bottom so I can see all my slides I'll go back to design so you see when I click on them you can see how all of them are changing and you can change it whenever you want so there are no rules about it anytime you want it you can just change the theme to whichever you want it to be so it's very easy to do that and whenever you get these themes you'll find there are some variants that starts to show up so this is one of the new feature so you can just click on the variations of it as you like it and then from here you can have changes to colors because when you start pointing to some of them they'll do certain variations on some of the themes so you see as I clicked on it they start to change so that's from the design tab and you can go to that colors or you can go to even fonts so if you wanted to change the combinations of fonts if I choose this one and then a lot of them will start to change and another new feature that's come up in uh, 2013 is the slide size. I think it was there in the previous one. Maybe it's not that visible. I can click it and I can make it standard 4x3. Like this. Because nowadays many of the laptops and computers are 16 by 9 So they've got this feature, widescreen feature. And you can also do a custom slide size if you need it to fit the screen nicely. So anytime you want to change your themes, just click on it and you can also browse for them and find some more online. Change it. You can use variations or you can go from there, colors, and then choose something else. And it changes a lot of different things. I'm just going to double click on one of these slides. So I can come to normal view. So by double clicking, you come back to normal view rather than going to view and then normal or the button on the bottom, the right hand side. That's the normal button. Now, if I wanted to change the color on this slide or all the slide, I needed a different one. I can either right click on it and I should see format background or in the design tab, there is the button here called format background. I click it. And now I can choose whether I want a solid color and I can choose a different color. And as I'm choosing it, it will start to change. And you can choose to apply to all. It means all the slides will have this color. It's always a good thing to be consistent with PowerPoint. But sometimes, you know, you may have a chart or a picture and you may need to change the slide color on the background to make it look nice. Or if you don't hit apply to all, it will only apply to this one. But besides solid color, you can choose to have it gradient feel. That is, you want to mix colors up so you can have two different combinations going. So there are many different ways of doing it. They also have some presets that you can choose from. So this is the combinations of couple of colors. And then you can affect the, how the gradients will be affected. So you can play around with it and get a better sense of it radial or you want it to be rectangle and do that besides gradient I can choose to have a picture or a texture feel so there are lots of textures that you can choose from and again you can apply to all if you ever needed it 
If I wanted, I could use insert a picture from a file. So I can click on a file and then I can go to where my pictures are. Double click on it and you see the picture is added. Now the other thing you have to you might be realizing that the picture might be very bright. So you scroll down and then you see the transparency, you increase the transparency so that the picture in the background starts to get lighter. And now if I hit apply to all, all the slides will have this. Now just to see this in action, I can go to slideshow from beginning and you see there it is. So as I click, you can see all the slides have that background. I can hit escape to stop it. Or instead of going from slideshow from beginning, there is a shortcut button here. Start from beginning. If it's not there, you can click here and you can add it. Start from beginning. By default, I think it's there. I can go back to design and I can click on something else to change it. So that's a really good way to add your format background. I can close this window. So now the next thing I want to do is that when I transition my slides, I, my, I want my slides to transition in a nice way. So if I go to the transitions tab, and you see there's options where I can make it push up, I can make it split, random bars, so, and there are lots of different ways how your slide will transition. So maybe I'll use the honeycomb. And you see how it's showing me how it will transition? So now to see the effects, I'm going to use this slideshow start from beginning button. And as I click, you will see, oops, I made a mistake. That's a good thing to do. So honeycomb in the transition. And I need to make sure I hit apply to all. If I don't hit apply to all, the changes haven't been done because it will only apply that transition to this one slide. So I'll hit apply to all. Now let's see, start from beginning and there it's coming. So when I click, it will transition to the second slide. I'll hit escape to stop. So this is called slide transition and you can also apply sound to your slide transition but just be careful because your transition might become a joke if you decide to do that because it will make those noises every time your slide changes. If you need it, maybe add it, maybe just at the end, maybe like an applause so that you can don't hit apply to all, you can only apply to that particular one. And they've added a lot of new features in Transitions Origami. And it shows me how it's transitioning. If you didn't see it, you can always preview it. And you can hit Apply to All. Now for this particular transition, they have some more effects options that you can choose whether you want it to move to the right or to the left. And you can hit Apply to All. Now besides transition, there is another thing which is known as custom animation. So that is, I'm on the summary slide. Now when I go to my slideshow, all my points are coming together. So what I want to do is, I only want a few points to come at a time. So to do this, I click in the box because you need to tell the computer what needs to be changed. And then I go to animations. And then here I can add the animations. I can make it float in if I want it. So see when I hit float in, each bullet will come together. So in this case, the sub bullets will also come together. One, two, three, and then the fourth point. You can make it come in different ways if you want it. So there are a lot of different ways that you can make it come. Bounce. So it will come in a bouncing way. In fact, that was the exit. So this was the entrance, which I added in the more earlier. And then this is the exit. So if I hit preview, you'll find that they go out in that way when the PowerPoint is running. 
Now if I change my mind, I can just go back here and I can say none. Because right now there was only the exit and no entrance. So I can choose whatever I want or I can even make certain things emphasize. So I can do that. So I'll just choose the entrance for now. If you wanted to see more entrances, you'll see it under the Add Animation, More Entrance Effects, and there are lots of other ones that you can look at. Now I'll just go up here and add, uh, say, a Exit Effect, and I can choose to exit in a different way, and I'll click OK. Let's preview it. So if I hit Preview, so you see that my lines are showing up. And after they've shown up, they leave an exit out. And you can also add emphasis. So there are like two different animations added to it. If you wanted to see them properly, you can click on the animation pane. And you'll see this animation pane. And you'll see that this is for entrance. And then this is for the exits. And you can then control things from here as you needed it. I'll talk about this a little bit more in the other videos that will be upcoming up. And there's an effect options which controls whether you want things to show up by paragraph, that is the bullet, or do you want to show up all together. I'll close this. We'll do one more practice with uh, looking at something else. So I'll go to this one because you can do animation on an image. So I can click on it and I can click on add animation and if I wanted I'll say make it uh, emphasize it so I can say pulse let's preview it uh, I think the pulse is not having any effect I'll make it swivel okay that's fine so I'm making it emphasizing it in fact that was the entrance let me see if I can do this emphasize yeah that means as soon as the picture will be there when the slide shows up, but it will swivel. So that's called emphasizing it. So you can do that if you needed it. Let's look at slideshow from current slide. And as I click, it will emphasize some things. I can hit escape on the keyboard. The next thing I want to talk about is an option by which you can make the slideshow run automatically so that I don't have to hit the button. So if you had a business and you wanted to run a PowerPoint slide showing people different things, you can rehearse the timings on it. So to do that, under the slideshow tab, there is a button here called rehearse timings. Now what you have to do when you start it, you decide how much time you want to give on each slide and then you keep on changing the timings. And you can change the timings later, uh, but for now you need to tell the PowerPoint every, how much minute or seconds you want on all the slides. So for now, I'm just going to give it one or two seconds so that we don't spend too much time. So I'll click Rehearse Timing. And you'll find that this option shows up here and it, it will start to do a countdown and I'm going to hit the next button so I can keep changing it. Now in this one, because I want each line to show up faster and also the exit, so I'm going to start hitting it faster. So I'm just giving it one or two seconds. And that origami thing is also taking up some time. So I'm just clicking the next buttons for everything. And now it's saying it will take 20 seconds. I'll just say yes to it. Now to show you the timings, I'll go to view, slide sorter. And under each and every slide, you'll see the timings. And if you wanted to change the time on any one of them, you can go to the transitions and in the corner you see the timings here so I can reduce it here and it will adjust the slide automatically according to that now if you run the slideshow from beginning the slideshow should run on its own you don't have to do anything now if you are running it on a TV screen and you wanted it to loop if that is the case you go to slideshow 
and you click on set up slideshow and then you just tell it to loop continuously until escape so this way you don't have to be there it will just keep on looping from slide 1 to slide 8 and then come back to slide 1 so you don't have to do anything at all and I can click OK and that will be it you can also choose to record your audio narrations and any other things you wanted to add to it to your slideshow now for some reason if you realize that you like this arrangement of slides but you want a different arrangement where your slideshow sometimes run in a different order so you can create custom slideshows I can click new and I'll give it any name you want and then I can say the first slide should be this but then I want the number 8 to be the second slide then the slide 3 then the slide 4 then the slide 5 and then I want the slide 2 and that's it so you can create a custom show and I click OK and I can close it now if you want when you go to set up slideshow you can tell it to run your custom slideshow by clicking here and then choosing the custom show one so that's the useful thing because you might sometimes have different needs at different times so you can also create these shows so that whenever you want it from the slideshow you can actually just run the custom show the custom show one rather than the slideshow from beginning which is in this order the last thing I want to talk about this video is about printing so if I wanted to print something I can go to file and then I can click on print and then from here I can choose whether I want to print all the slides which by default it will do that one slide per one page and if I want it I can change it to print my custom ranges or I can even ask it to choose my custom show you can choose how many copies you want which printer to print on but the most important option when it comes to printing is if you want to print full page slides or I can click on the drop down button and I can choose that you know what let's print two slides per page so it will print it like this or I can sell it to print like a outline so then it only has my outline nothing else or if I wanted three slides per page so it will put one two three all together and I can also choose the colors and I can make it grayscale or I can just make it pure black and white so that it removes all the extra color so I don't waste ink and if you wanted to control your slides you could just click here and you can start typing the slides you wanted to print and they always give you explanations like how you want so if I can say one comma four comma five through eight so I can do that so now it won't be printing all of them it's only gonna print the number that I presented to it and as you make changes you can start seeing it here on the right hand side so that's a good option and then you can hit print for now we'll just hit the back arrow here because we don't need to print so that's it for this video uh, in the next video we'll talk about master slides and about inserting uh, background music and also some other minor things thanks for watching